This is the Witching Hour Magical Podcast with your host, Ginger Quinlan. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Witching Hour Magical Podcast. I am so happy to be with you this week as we go into the 4th of July weekend. Happy 4th. I think this year, the 4th of July holds a whole different energy than it's held for a very, very, very long time. And hopefully everybody out there will uh, really put some healing energy out into our United States, which is not terribly united right now. Just a thought. So perhaps maybe light a candle for the healing of America and for the correction of some of the things that are going on to really destabilize us in so many ways. But enough about that. You're here to hear something magical, to listen to some energetic thoughts, wisdom, tips, and tricks to enhance your life. And today we're going to dive right into it. We just moved into cancer season. Happy birthday, cancers, which means the energies that are all around us all through the month of July, starting right now on this Thursday, June 30th, when I'm recording this, there is this very, very, very intense energy of home, family, life, nurturing, being inside your shell, that is a cancer trait, being inside your emotions, in your head, in your dreams, kind of hiding out from the world, maybe having some quiet time in your home. But beyond that energy is another very prevalent energy that's kind of weird feeling right now, kind of throwing us off balance and making us feel unsure of everything. It really is. It's so weird. Um, I'm feeling it. I've walked around today just going, I'm a weirdo today. I feel weird. Uh, But it's the energies. It's the planetary energies that are really creating this kind of uncomfortable vibe of almost teetering on the edge of feeling agitated, also a little depressed, maybe kind of scattered and kind of arguing with yourself about, I should do this, or I shouldn't do that, or I have this opportunity, and oh my God, I have this opportunity, and how am I going to do this opportunity? Am I screwing up? And is this in my best interest? All of those kind of energies are coming up right now for every single one of us. And it's messing with our hearts and our heads hugely. So breathe, breathe, breathe. Try to stay grounded while this energy is kind of messing with us and throwing us off balance and kind of making us do a deep dive into our souls to figure out where we're going with everything. It's super intense. Today is probably one of the most intense days, which is why I decided to jump on and record this podcast today instead of tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be even more intense, and really July 4th is going to be the most intense for all of us. Serious planetary energy happening that is going to create some conflict, may create anger, may create agitation, could disrupt conversations, could have people saying, this is a person I need to be with, I want to marry you, could have other people saying, I'm sick of this, I'm out of here, and get divorced. All of that kind of energy is roaming around right now, and we'll be at the height of it on July 4th. Happy July 4th, people. (laughs) So be good to yourself over the weekend. If you're tired and, and you're feeling like you just can't move forward, honor that. Take time out. If you need to rest on the 4th of July and kind of isolate a bit and say, you know what, even though it's a party day, I don't feel like it, honor that feeling. And if you're having trouble staying very grounded, come July 4th, 
just maybe do some deep breathing. Perhaps go out barefoot, get your feet in the dirt, hug a tree, do all these things that are earthy, plant some flowers. If none of that works for you, if you don't have the energy to go outside and be out in nature, then you can do something as easy as just putting your right hand over your heart center in the middle of your chest. Close your eyes and just breathe and listen to your heartbeat. That will ground you. It will stabilize you. It will make you feel like you're back in your body and you're back to being who you are. So just some things to get you through the weekend. And today, I want to talk about some things that will get you through July <laughs> and, and make your home your castle or your workplace, your safety zone to be creative and to do the things you need to do to manifest money. Because we have all of this cancer energy around us, and it is huge, huge cancer energy this month of being with our home, our family, nurturing, kids are out of school, some of you are taking vacations together, everybody's kind of chilling with everybody else. I thought it would be good to talk about our houses and our offices and talk about the energies that happen when our houses and our offices are drenched in negativity. Let's jump into the Witching Hour magical podcast with this episode, which is Talk to Your House. So I like to really go into what happens when you do not energetically cleanse your house. And some really good examples of that is when you go to somebody else's house and you walk up to the front door and your first feeling is, I don't want to knock on that door. I don't want him to open the door. It feels funky out front. Ew. And there's not a good feeling at the front door at all. And then when that person that you're going to see that you're excited to go see, but you're going, oh, I don't want to go in there. They open the front door and you have to go in and you're like, oh, I don't like it here. I feel tired. I feel like I should clean something. I feel like I should leave. Or you feel incredibly drained, even though you love your friend or your family member, whoever it is you have stopped by to see. Their house makes you feel like you just got the life sucked out of you or that you can't concentrate, or you feel like it's dirty, not physically dirty, but energetically dirty. And this could be your house. You may be coming home from work and feel great and open your front door and walk in and go, ah, and you want to clean everything right away. You want to pick it up. You want to move it. You want to not even acknowledge the people in your house. You just want to go attack your house and say, I am taking over control right now. And that's really what you're doing. You're energetically trying to shift the energy. This can also happen huge in offices. If you are heading to the office and you're doing great, it's the morning, you've got your Starbucks, you've stopped there, you're ready to go. You've got your mindset on what you're going to do today. You walk in the door. You walk to your office. You go into your office and suddenly Starbucks doesn't matter. You have no energy. In the first 10 minutes, you're exhausted. You have people coming to your desk constantly all day long, dumping all their issues at your desk for no apparent reason. And you're sitting there going, oh, I want to lay on the floor and die right now. These are all signs of an energetically negative space. And we've all been in them. 
right? Are you thinking about a space that you were just in right now that made you feel all of those things? I have a space in my house that makes me feel that way, my laundry room. I just like my laundry room intensely, and so I'm always moving stuff around in it. I need to put new flooring down. I ripped the flooring out because it was all coming up, and it was from like the 60s, I think. But I haven't had the time, the strength, or the energy to put new flooring down. And I think that makes it feel really icky and dirty in there. So I run in, I throw my laundry in the washer or the dryer, and I <laughs> turn everything on and I go, that was fast. And I get right out of there because I don't like being in there. There's nothing in there that makes me go, Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so welcoming. Even though I'm doing laundry, I still want it to feel good because I'm sensitive to energy. And so I put it off and I put it off and I go in and I run in and I shut the door and I get out of there just as quick as I can because it makes me feel icky when I'm in there. The rest of the house doesn't make me feel so much except for my husband's bedroom where I'm pretty sure somebody died. And the only reason I feel icky in there is because I see this man who lived in this house for 50 years and he likes to surprise me, which I don't like. So, <laughs> so I kind of turn on all the lights when I go in there and just say, don't screw with me. I, I'm just popping in to grab laundry and clean a little bit and I'm out of here because I know it's your space. So I kind of honor him even though he I don't like being surprised by him, but he's not negative. He's just there and I know he's there. So it's a different feel in that space, but other spaces you may walk into and just have that feeling of, ew, I don't want to be in here. So what can you do about it? There's a lot you can do about it. So how can you turn this energy around in your house? It's summer, kids are out of school, you're doing home family things, you may be doing staycations, so everybody's home. And you, whoever is in charge of your home, is responsible for cleaning, keeping the energy clear, for making sure everybody's feeling good, for making it cohesive, all of these things that happen when everybody's home. Like during the pandemic, for example, when everybody was suddenly forced to be home and we are all together for long periods of time, I know for me, I wanted to clean my house constantly because I was just stuck here. And I'm so sensitive to energy. If the energy felt really off because we were scared, we were watching the news, which we shouldn't have done. We were hearing from all our friends and our family who had COVID, who had this, who had that, what was going on. I was talking to clients and they were dealing with people who were sick and I worried about them. All of that was going on during the pandemic. And it was all getting dumped into our homes. So where does it go? It collects on the floor of your house. That's where it goes. It collects in the dark places of your house. It collects in the dirt. It collects in the clutter. That's where it goes. So how do you deal with that? Well, today we're going to dive into how you deal with that and what you can do to shift the energy of your house and make your house your sanctuary and make it a place you love to open the front door to and walk into and not feel like you need to kick your shoes off and start attacking it to shift that energy. So here we go. First tip. I'm going to give you lots of tips in this podcast, lots of tips, lots of wisdom, lots of ideas, lots of things that work, tools that work 
to help your house feel amazing. So my number one tip for anybody who knows me <laughs> that has gotten a reading from me and talked to me over the years knows I am a huge advocate of sea salt. Sea salt is an amazing purifier. It clears negative energy. It gets the energetic sludge off of your floor. It makes your house, your space feel clean, totally clean. So how do you know if your house is not energetically clean? Well, you will be tired all the time in your home. You will argue in your house. You will clean your house and it will not feel clean to you. Like my laundry room never feels clean to me. It's because I need to redo it and it needs some love and it probably needs some sea salt. Yeah, I haven't sea salted it in a long, long time because I don't like going in there. So if you have a space in your home, and this applies to your office too, if you have a space in your office, like your desk, and everybody comes to your desk and they tell you all their problems and then they leave and they shut your door, where does it go? All over you and all over your office. Yeah, same thing at home. If you're having a great day, you've done amazing things. You've had like the best day ever. Your husband or your wife comes home. They've had the worst day ever. They sit down and they start dumping all of the negative things that happen to them during the day right at your feet. Where does it go? All over you all over that space. And then where does it go when that's all finished? Nowhere. It stays right there. And why does it stay there? Because we are all energy and we are all connected energy. So if you think about it, the last two years has been nothing but the collective consciousness that you, me, and everybody else that's all energetically connected is being bombarded over and over and over and over again every single freaking day with negativity about politics, money, food shortages, <laughs> job shortages, money, all of it. All of it is hitting us over and over and over and over and over again. And it just collects into the collective consciousness. But more than that, you take it home with you. You're bringing that energy into your awareness. Where does it go? It stays. Then you take it home. And where does it go when you get home? in your consciousness. And if you talk about it, it gets drenched all over the room that you're in. So how do you fix it? This was a huge issue for me when I was doing readings in my house, because I would see a lot of clients during the day at my kitchen table. And it got to the point <laughs> where I didn't even want to go in my kitchen because I felt like I was walking in to like a quicksand kind of energy where I go in there and go, well, tonight I'm going to make an awesome dinner for me and the kids and we're going to eat like kings and queens. And I get in there and I get the food out of the fridge and I'd start cooking. And within five minutes, I was in the worst mood ever. And no, it wasn't my blood sugar. It wasn't the food I was making. It was the energy because I totally had an awareness that I was feeling depressed in my beautiful kind of soft yellow kitchen where I love to be in. It had a great big picture window and a nice kitchen table in front of the window. And it was a cozy spot in my house that I loved. But because I never cleared the space, I didn't know how when I was doing readings in my kitchen, all that energy 
that I was using to do readings and all the energy of the people who were telling me all of their secrets and their heartbreaks and talking to dead people and doing all these things in my kitchen every single day, all day long, collected and it stayed. And I would go in there and just go, oh, I can't function in here. And it got to the point where even doing readings in there was painful, literally painful in my heart to go into the kitchen to do another reading. It wasn't until I learned about sea salt and how to sprinkle it around your house to clear the energy that everything changed in that kitchen. And I learned the importance of cleansing energy in the spaces that you live in, not just your own body, but where you live so you can feel good, so you can feel you, so you can feel positive energies instead of all the gunky, icky, emotional energies that are like sludge on your kitchen floor and on your walls. <clears throat> there is an entire video that shows you how to sea salt. Sea salt will be your new best friend for sure. It's so easy. You sprinkle it around your house like you're sprinkling it on uh, food and you follow your baseboards around your house. You open a window or a door to let the energies out. You wanna make sure nobody's home. And then you talk to your house and you tell it, I cleanse this energy in love and light for the highest good of all involved. And you do that through your entire house. And for more details on that and what to do when you're all finished, go check out my sea salt video. And please excuse my awful super white yellow hair in that video because <laughs> I overprocessed it and didn't know I was gonna be doing a video with my friend, John O'Neill, who makes amazing videos. But I will leave a link to that below this podcast on YouTube for you to find. And I'll leave it in the description here on Anchor. So yeah, sea salt your house. That will clear out energetic sludge. If you don't have time to do a full sea salt session of your entire house, you can put fine granulated sea salt in a spray bottle, add warm water, put the sprayer on, shake it up really good. You wanna do the same thing, open a window, open a door. The energy has to go somewhere while you're cleansing. Make sure you do this while nobody is home. If you have dogs or cats, it won't bother them. If you have birds, fish tanks, or plants, it will bother them. So be careful not to spray around your plants or your fish tanks and potentially birds because it will kill them and I don't want that to happen. So what you do with your spray bottle is you start at your front door, you go counterclockwise, you spray up towards the ceiling, be careful of fine like silky satiny fabrics. Sometimes the sea salt water will stain that. So be careful of those. But other than that, you can do everything and go all the way around your house and just do a quick sea salt spray. I used to do it in my kids' rooms a lot, especially when they were teenagers. And they were spending an incredible amount of time sitting in their rooms, playing games, being teenagers that didn't want to be out in the world and were just feeling icky. I call it teenager PMS because that's really what it is. We all know what that is. <laughs> so I would sea salt their rooms once a week and use sea salt spray and actual fine granulated sea salt and it would clear the negative energy out. And they actually slept better, felt better. They also cleaned their rooms after I did that because sea salt makes you want to clean. It makes you want to get the energetic sludge out of your house. So those are two sea salt tips. And again, you'll find more about that on my actual sea salt video on YouTube. The other thing you can do that is so incredibly powerful is use lemons. You want to get four or five lemons and 
you can either cut them up or leave them whole. I do both. I put whole lemons in my kitchen. I also put one under my bed sometimes. I put one next to my bed if I'm sick. If I've had an especially hard day in my office, I will cut open a lemon, stick it in a bowl, and put salt on it and let it sit in my office. Not only does it smell good, but it cleanses the air, it cleanses the energy, it absorbs all the negativity, and it makes my room feel amazing. You can do this next to your bed. Also, you can just put a whole lemon there in a bowl and let it absorb, or you can cut it in half, throw some sea salt in it, and stick it in a bowl under your bed. That will help absorb negative energy off of your body and refresh you totally. It's an amazing thing. When I feel especially awful, that is my go-to thing. Now, if you want to clean your office, all of these apply to an office situation. So if you're working out somewhere in an office and everybody is dumping their energy at your desk, if you were like the healer wise person of your working group and you are the person everybody kind of hunts down to tell you all their issues and then they leave feeling better and shut your door and all that's trapped in there, lemons, lemons will collect it for you. And if you don't like the way lemons smell or your coworkers might go, oh, why do you have a lemon with salt? in your office, you can actually just put a bowl of sea salt on your desk or put it like in your bookcase or even sprinkle it in your windowsill if you have a window in there. It will absorb just like a lemon. Lemons actually get the heavy duty emotional stuff that people dump out of the room. It's pretty amazing and it smells good. And then when that lemon gets dry and funky, you can just toss it and replace it. And it'll just keep your space super fresh. I like to put lemons sometimes out in my living room after I've had people over and I don't cut them open. I don't add sea salt. I just place them out there in a bowl, two or three of them. And within 45 minutes, that room feels more stable. It feels more like my house again. Like I didn't just have a whole bunch of people who came over and dumped a lot of stuff there. Um, And it just makes everything feel more grounded. And you can tell if there's a heavy duty amount of negativity in that spot by the way the lemons look after about an hour or two. If you notice your lemons are getting black spots or they look moldy, you've got a big negative energy problem in your house. So then you want to go ahead and sea salt everything, do a big cleanse, burn some sage, burn some Palo Santo, and bless your house when that's going on. So those are some tips on lemons and sea salt to get you started. You can also put lemon juice in a cup of water and put that in a room where somebody is sick. Say you're taking care of a parent who's very sick, you can put lemon juice in that water and it will absorb all the energies and help clear some of the sickness vibes that are in that room, especially if you're like a caretaker person and you don't want the family coming over and seeing that you've got a lemon full of sea salt sitting next to that person's bed and they think, oh, she's all into voodoo or whatever. No, you don't want all that. You can just put some lemon juice, regular lemon juice in a glass of water and let it sit in there for an hour or two. It'll raise the vibes in that room. It'll make the person who's sick feel lighter and brighter and it will shift the entire vibe of the room. You can also put lemon juice in a bottle of water. You can even add sea salt in a spray bottle 
and spray it around. Spray it around your house. Go to the four corners of your house with your lemon juice water and just spray those corners because the four corners of your house are the parts of your house that balance the entire energy of the structure. You can also do this in your office. Do the four corners of your office at the end of the day when everybody's dumped their stuff in there or if you've had an especially hard day with coworkers, go to the four corners. So let's talk about the four corners a little more in depth. In a house, the four corners, the north, south, east, and west corners of your house are the stability of the structure. I don't know if you've ever thought about the four corners, but it's such a powerful energy to work with in your personal space. So you want to get a compass and figure out what is your north, south, east, and west corners of your house. For those of you who do feng shui, you know what this is. It's all about correcting the energies of your house and lifting the vibrations to manifest, to keep things clear, to attract what you want to bring in, whether it's love, family, good health, money, relationships, whatever it is, the four corners of your house can help you do that. And that's a whole different podcast on feng shui, which I'll probably do in the future because you all know I love feng shui. But for this podcast, let's talk about how to keep the four corners of your house protected. So the four corners are the two front corners of your house and the two back corners of your house. If you take a compass and find what is north, south, east, or west, or you just know what it is, you can do things in those corners to amp up the energy of your house. It's so cool. And it takes just a little bit of time and you will probably immediately feel a difference. So if your house is like negativity central, everybody's fighting, nobody's getting along, everybody's tired, they're mopey, they're just blah. Do some things to the four corners. And this is what you can do. If you want to attract money to your house and stabilize the money energy of your house, get yourself some garnet. Garnet is great for stabilizing the energy, for putting the energy of attracting money, attracting wealth, attracting a great relationship, amping up sexual energy in a relationship, and boosting the good health and vitality of your house. So you can get garnet chips and don't spend a lot of money doing this. You can find like chunks of garnet on the Facebook sales groups. You can find it any rock shops. Uh, Amazon, I'm sure, sells it. And it doesn't have to be high quality garnet at all. But what you're going to do with these garnets, you want four, you're going to place a garnet in each corner of your house. I like to put them where you can't see them and where my cats can't find them because they definitely will relocate my stones. So I have one in the front left hand far corner behind a chair. And I have one on the right hand side that is behind a cabinet. I have it in the back of my house in the bedroom that is the back of my house. And there's a closet back there. There's a garnet in that closet. There's a garnet in the right side of my house too. So, and when I place those garnets in the four corners, I say, I want to manifest abundance, opportunity, power in my relationship, strength, good health in my relationship and for myself. And I basically program that corner of my house with that garnet. And you can feel it. You can feel it when you're all done 
it shifts the energy dramatically. Another thing you can do is sprinkle dried basil. We all have basil in our cabinet, our cooking cabinet with our spices. You just want to sprinkle some dried basil under your welcome mat at the front door. That attracts money, people, and contracts. You can also put it in your mailbox. That attracts money, people, and contracts. If you're trying to sell your house, sprinkle it around your for sale sign. That attracts money, people, and contracts. Um, And you can sprinkle it around your for sale sign three times. Go clockwise. It works. It totally works. You can even go so far as to sprinkle basil up your sidewalk. Just follow your sidewalk and sprinkle basil. Get to your front door. Sprinkle it under the doormat or in front of the flashing of your front door. That attracts money straight to your door. You can also do this at your office. It will totally look like you had a drug deal go bad and your pot spilled everywhere. But who cares? You're attracting money, right? They don't need to know. It's basil. (laughs) It's great for attracting money. All right. If you have negativity that comes to your house from other people, like you have a family member who's incredibly negative, you have a partner who is negative and brings negativity the minute he or she hits the door, you can put dragons yep, dragons, at the four corners of your house. And you're probably thinking, this woman's lost her mind. No, it's a feng shui tip that you can use. It's also a magical tip that you can use to cement protection around your house. And I'm using cement as an analogy because dragons are big. Dragons are heavy. Dragons have an imposing energy. So you can even do this if you have like a nasty neighbor who's giving you trouble. You can put dragons into place around your house. So how do you do that? Placing dragons is so easy. Oh my gosh, it's easy and you're going to love doing it. You can visualize. It's all a visualization. You're not actually go, going to hunt down dragons and uh, wrangle them up and stick them in your yard. No, you are going to place them on the outside of your house in the north, south, east, and west corners. So it's important that you know where north, south, east, and west is in your house to do this. So for your east side of your house, you are going to place an air dragon there. And you can visualize your air dragon however you want. It can be all yellow and bright and vibrant and big. And it smashes its tail down. And it says, no negativity. You can visualize this dragon any way you see it. And then when you get to the south side of your house, you're going to place a fire-breathing dragon in the south side of your house. South is all about fire. It's all about burning away negativity. So you can put a big red honking flaming nasty dragon there. Visualize whatever kind of dragon you want in the south side of your house. West side of your house is water. It's all about the direction of water. You can put a watery dragon there. Something blue, something oceany something with a long kind of mermaidish tail if you want to and ask that dragon to protect that corner of that house then in the north side you want an earth dragon it can be woodsy and green and look like a tree whatever you want to have there that's earthy strong powerful grounding that is your earth dragon so visualize your dragons see the corners of your house, and then you can say, I invoke the energies of protective dragons to come to the four corners of my house. And I like to stand in the middle of my house, which is my dining room, and I point 
to each direction, visualizing the outside of my house and the direction of my house. So I start in the east with my air dragon. I go to the south with my fire dragon and I point in those directions. And I say, I invoke the energy of air. This dragon protects my communication. It protects my interactions with other people. It protects my house from an invasion of negativity. And you will stay in this spot until I release you. My south dragon. I invoke the energy of the south dragon to protect my house from any harm, to protect it from anger, harsh words, negativity. I invoke you to stay in the south section of my house until I release you. And in the west, I invoke the water dragon and I point to the west. I invoke the water dragon to protect me from negative emotions. It's all about emotions in the west. From hurtful feelings, from things that make me feel depressed, from any kind of negative emotion that may come my way. I invoke the water dragon and you will stay in this place until I release you. And the earth dragon, I invoke the earth dragon in the north to protect my house. And with the north dragon, I ask that you bless my house, hold it in strength, hold it in security. Earth is all about stability. So I invoke the North Dragon to keep my house stable, to keep my money flowing, to protect it from unstable energies. And you will stay here until I release you. And if you want to invoke a spirit dragon and point to your roof and put a spirit dragon on your roof, go for it. I invoke the energy of the spirit dragon to watch over my house, to bring in my angels and guides, to keep the energy nice and fresh. And you will stay there until I release you. What do you think about that? Do you like it? I love it. I think it's powerful and beautiful and it works. So you can keep these dragon energies around your house as long as you want to. I like to re-invoke them every eight weeks, especially if the energies are super intense like they are right now. I like to make sure they're in place, keeping my house wonderful and protected. And only I know that my dragons are out there watching out for me. And it's a pretty powerful feeling when you know that you are working with the elements, you're working with an energy that you've placed there, and you will feel a difference with your house. Because here's the thing, your house is energy, just like you and I. We're all energy. And when you invoke or place energy that is meant to protect or release or to stabilize or to clear, then it affects your well-being inside your house and outside your house. And your house goes, thank you. I feel crappy. So I'm going to make you feel crappy so you notice. And that's what happens when our houses collect all this heavy duty energy from other people or just from us. You may just have a bad day. You know, I woke up this morning going, I don't feel so good and I feel kind of depressed and I'm sure it's the planets. And I I was kind of sitting in my chair going, you know, (laughs) those things you do in the morning when you first get up and your coffee hasn't kicked in and you haven't seen like your day could turn around with the littlest things with mine did. And then it was like, wow, I felt negative this morning. And then when I went back, into my living room after I was outside doing some garden stuff. It's like, oh, it feels icky in here. So I felt that I had dumped some energy there that needed cleansed. And so spray bottle with lemon juice, I did that. And I burned some incense too. So let's talk about incense 
and uh, things you can use to burn in your house with smoke and fire that are good to clear the energy. Everybody says you sage. So I have some feelings about sage. I love sage. A lot of people are very sensitive to the scent though, and it can really permeate your fabrics and make it so smell like you live in a place where everybody smokes pot. And when I was a baby psychic and first learning how to cleanse, I burned sage all the time in my house. I totally walked around kind of smelling like a bong, totally. And I would have people say to me, hey, can I buy something from you? It's like, I don't have anything. And I didn't know why they were asking me that until one day I went to work and my coworker said to me, did you like smoke a big fatty on your way to work? It's like, what? No, I smudged my kitchen because I have readings in the afternoon. She's like, you smell like you sm smoked a great big joint. It's like, oh no. So that abruptly stopped my using sage every single day and cleansing my kitchen and my work clothes. Yeah, no more of that. So you have to be kind of careful with sage if you're saging and then going out into the world unless, you know, you want people to notice. I wasn't aware of it because I didn't walk around smelling myself after I sage. But the other thing about sage is not only does it clear negativity, it kind of clears everything. So if you want your house to feel really, really, really good after you smudge it with sage, you need to put the energy back into your house. So that is an issue. What if you don't have time? You're smudging, smudging, you're smudging. Then you just want to leave because you got to get out of the energy and all the smoke. How do you get the energy back in there? You either have to light some candles or visualize positive energy filling up the space with bright yellow, happy light with pink around it for unconditional love and blah, blah, blah. That's just a whole lot of work. So I actually stopped using sage altogether and switched over to Neg Champa, which not only clears negative energy, but it has a lot of herbs and resins in it, which lifts all the energy up and makes you feel amazing. Some other scents you can use if you have super heavy negativity in your house or your house is heavily haunted, you have a lot of spirit activity in there. You can get camphor incense to cleanse your house. It smells like Vicks Vapor Rub. It's stinky. Some people really like it. I always feel like I should have chicken soup with it. It's stinky, but it clears negative energy fabulously. So you might want to try that. Nag Champa clears the energy, raises it back up. You can get it as a stick incense or a powder incense. Either one of those are great. Another favorite of mine is frankincense. It clears negative energy and then raises it right back up again. Also, copal, it's a resin. It's very light, doesn't have a big smell. It's wonderful. And of course, Palo Santo is amazing. Natural antibiotic, like sage, clears out negativity, but it raises all the vibrations. So it's, it's a very beautiful, beautiful scent to use to cleanse your home. The other thing it does, clears out negative spirits. So all of these are options you can use to burn in your home, to make it feel better, to make you feel better, and to get rid of the negativity. You can also use essential oils to boost the energy in your house. Now, if you have cats, you need to really pay attention to what can bother cats. I have cats. I like to open a window if I'm doing any kind of diffuser type thing or if I'm spraying any kind of room sprays with 
essential oils because even though I want my room to feel better, I do not want to kill my cat. <laughs> so yeah, I pay attention to what is toxic for animals hugely because I have a lot of them. And you can use in your house with essential oils to really boost up the energy. Roses, roses will bring an uplifting, open-hearted feeling to your house. So even if you bring like cut roses in or you use rose essential oil, I like to put rose oil on the headboards of my beds. I put just a little couple drops. I just put one on each end of the headboard. So when I put rose oil on the headboard, it opens up my heart while I'm sleeping. It uplifts my energy. My husband thinks it smells amazing and it relaxes both of us. And we have kind of like a nice little talk before we go to sleep and we feel super connected. So that's what rose oil can do on your headboards. If you're having guests come over and you want them to feel cozy and loved and cared for, put some rose oil on the end of your headboards. They'll love it. You can use peppermint. Peppermint's an uplifting oil. I also put peppermint in the windowsills um, to keep bugs out of my house. I live in Georgia. I live in Bugville. And um, palmetto bugs do not like peppermint. Neither do ants. It drives them away. And mosquitoes are not real keen on it either. So I put drops of peppermint in my windowsills. I have little tiny windowsills so my cats cannot get in it. So I know it won't hurt them. I also put peppermint on my doorknob to come into my house. I have three doors that come into my house. And I put a little dab of peppermint under the doorknobs because peppermint attracts money. So I put that there. I also put dabs of peppermint above the front door on the frame of the door to attract money into my house. I also put my peppermint oil in my mailbox. I'm sure my mailman thinks I'm weird as hell. And I am. But it attracts money to my mailbox. I kid you not. When I do that, I get a check randomly from somewhere. Just out of the blue. Or a gift from somebody out of the blue. So try it. You'll like it. So that's how you can use incense and essential oils to lift the energy in your house too. You can also do one more technique that I do all the time with people when I tell them to bless their houses. I call it painting the walls. You can visualize light coming out of the palms of your hands. Do this after you've either smudged or sea salted. When you've done the beginning parts of an energetic cleansing, you can do this with your hands and you can do it around your whole house. It's really cool. So you want to visualize whatever energy you want to put back into the room after you cleansed it. So like I'm sitting in my office right now and if I just cleansed it, I would want my guides and angels to come in. I would want money, energy to be in here and I would want stability in here. So I would visualize purple coming out of my hands for my guides, my angels, that special magical energy. And I start at the front door and I take my hands usually in my right hand, and I see purple light come out of the palm of my hand, and I paint the walls with my hands. I just stand in the middle of the room and wave my hand like it has purple light coming out, like Spider-Man shooting webs, but my webs are purple light, and I just go around my room and visualize purple light hitting all my walls, and then I want that money energy to come in, so I see green light or orange light, orange is attraction. And I do all my walls, same way. And then I want stability. So I look at my floor and I do some brown light just to stabilize everything. And it's so incredibly powerful. 
and it feels really good. And then I'm done. I'm just done. And it puts all the energy back into the room. You can have an amazing time doing this, painting your rooms in colors with your hands, and you will absolutely feel like you're vibrating after you do that because you just filled your room with all this amazing energy, even your whole house. You can go in every room and do this. When I bless houses, that's what I do. I go in every room and I fill it back up with whatever the homeowner wants me to fill it with. And it's all about painting the walls with energy and giving it that love and that connection that it wants to totally shift the energy and make it that person's space with everything they desire to come into it and to clear out this old, nasty, whatever energy was there before I cleanse the house. So these are some things you can work with to shift the energy of your house. And I will leave you with one last magical tip for your house after you have cleansed it and it's just kind of doing its thing every day with you. When you come into your house, talk to your house. Say hello to it. Hello, house. Did you have a good day? I missed you. Now we're going to make dinner and we're going to be happy and we're going to watch TV or whatever we do in our lives. And you can tell your house tonight, I just want you to be peaceful. And your house will hear it and know what to do. Houses are energy. They want direction. Your energy. Give them direction. It's your space. When I leave my house, I say, bye house. I'll see you in a little while. And I love you. And I leave. And it leaves a positive energy in the house. Of course, I say goodbye to my dogs first. If there's a cat in there, it's like, bye cat. But I always tell my house, I'll see you later. Even if I just think it in my head, I do that. I also do that with my car. I do. When I had an office space, I did it with my office. You can absolutely do this because what you're doing is implementing energy between you and the space that you live in. And your house will totally love you back when you do these things and it will be your complete, beautiful, magical sanctuary. Let me know how it goes. Let me know in the comments if you did some of these tips and it worked for you or if you tried it and it did something different. Let me know. I love feedback. Totally, totally love it. So just let me know. I'm so happy I got to share this time with you today. And I wanted to just thank everybody for all the comments, all the shares, all the reaching out. If you like this podcast and you're on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're on my website and you're listening, please leave me a comment. If you're on social media, same thing, leave me a comment. And if you'd like to visit my website, it's witchinghourhatsandgifts.com. That is my creative website where all my hats, all the things I make live and where my podcast is. But you can also find me on YouTube, find me here on Anchor and on Spotify. So thank you for listening. I will see you next week. I hope you have a beautiful 4th of July. Just make sure that you watch your energy levels, watch your anger, because it's going to be a flare-up kind of weekend, and just nurture you. And I'll see you next time. Have a really magical weekend.